joining us here today. This is our celebration of the Chinese New Year. There are traditions. We all have traditions. Usually they are associated with specific holidays, whether that's something here in our culture like Thanksgiving or Christmas, maybe Easter. We also have in the martial arts, in the traditional Chinese martial arts schools, a tradition, and that is for the Chinese New Year. It is suggested that at about this time, the old year is growing very tired and is ready to leave. And the new year is ready to come in. But we want the new year to be ever so excited, happy, working with us, because if you remember, some of these things started hundreds of years ago in small villages where the weather, for instance, if nothing else, during that new year was going to be extremely important as to whether or not there were any crops that people ate. So you did everything you could to make this new year welcome, excited, happy. One of the ways that we do that is with the lions. And as you saw, we brought the lions in first. They did a little bow in front of the studio. That's kind of like to bring good luck to the studio. Then we are going to have a little bit more of a lion dance to close as well. That's going to be a little bit more intricate piece where they do a number of techniques. But in the meantime, we have a number of other things we'd like to share with you today. And these are traditional parts of how a Gong Fu school would probably celebrate that new year. So again, thank you very much for joining us. We start by offering to the sun toy in the back. The sun toy in the back of the studio is a place of ancestor recognition. Part of tradition is paying respect to your ancestors. If it were not for our grandparents, if it were not for our parents, we would not be here. And so we pay that kind of respect all the way back through the millennia, actually, to those that were responsible for coming up with these arts, <laughs> these activities, these systems that help us to learn to live longer, healthier, happy lives, and to practice what we practice today. So the first part is to put some food uh, out there for them. I'm sorry. Don't we need to welcome the outside in? Yes, that's, what, that's part of this. Okay. Yes, the first is putting the food. The food includes wine and tea. And, because ancestors have to have wine and tea. And the other thing, don't we all? And the other thing with the wine and tea is the idea that we want to make sure what we do is open to the community at large. And so before we actually put the tea and the wine on the sun toy, we are going to share wine and tea outside. One last piece outside before we move the food up. And what we have are two seizures here that are going to assist us. And if you two would come out, and then uh, Simu and Michael, he is the uh, head seeing here at the school at this time. The good one, right? The, oh, the good one. <laughs> so, we're going to present that outside and we will be right back in. Uh, except we locked ourselves out. So much for being an open school. <laughs> part of all the villages, all these communities. They, at times, were necessary to protect them. Uh, there were times when uh, villages would be challenged, and the martial arts schools had to work almost like a militia. There were times when they would offer 
philosophical assistance. There are times when they would offer healing assistance. A lot of them were experienced in some of the Chinese healing arts. They were there to support the community in whatever way was necessary. And so there was usually a pretty good relationship that existed between the community at large and the schools. So during a new year like this, most of this usually took place outside, regardless of the weather. And so sometimes it would get a little nasty out there, but it was a much bigger experience yet. All right, we're gonna start with that food. So if I could have all of the seeing and seizure that are performing today or on instruments today, please come up. They're going to bring the food up to the front and then I'm going to put it out. We put the food out in front of the sun toy, recognizing as far back as Damo, who in essence created a number of exercise sets that it is suggested may have been the basis for a lot of the traditional Kung Fu styles. And then down through the years since, including there's a picture on the sun toy of the last master in our systems to have passed away, which would have been Lum Jo. And then on the bottom of the sun toy, there is also uh, a couple of incense altars where we recognize the school itself and the system. So right now, if you would step and I believe that uh, Seeger is going to give you each one dish at a time uh, to carry out. So if you want to step in and pick those up and start bringing them up.
have seen it at times when you've come in, some of you who have not been here before, there's this little piece right up here, first thing you see when you come in the door. And this is a very mindful position for the moon how. It is where when we come in, we want to make as much of a conscious effort as we can to leave all the negative things outside. It is inevitable that in our days we have all kinds of stresses, difficulties, problems, but when we come here, we wish to, as much as possible, leave that at the door. So that when we come in, everybody here is just a brother or a sister of each other, and we can work together, play together, enjoy the time together. When we leave, we also stop here at the Moon House. Hopefully we won't have to pick up as much of that that we left off. Sometimes you gotta pick some of it up again because when you walk back out the door, you gotta deal with that reality too. So, we, We'll put some incense here as well. Very good. Yes, thank you. I'll wait till Marie sends me out again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a few special things this year as well as part of our New Year ceremony. Uh, we had the welcoming of the greater community, we have the incense, we have the feeding. Uh, we have a couple of presentations that we would like to do. Occasionally, if somebody passes a level and it is close to one of these uh, gatherings that we have, we try to give some special time to recognize their accomplishments. And today, that is going to be a group from our Tai Chi program. And we have five Tai Chi students. If those five students would please come up. As army. Your army. <laughs> as well as the instructors that have helped them. So we need to also have up here Marisa and Matt. And if you would step off to the side there, yes. And yes. Each level introduces a student to concepts, to technique, to understanding, not just within the art but within life as well. There is philosophical discussion, destruction, <laughs> philosophical <laughs> discussion, as well as an opportunity uh, for all the students to demonstrate their physical pieces, and then they also have a written test as well. All four of these instructors have assisted in teaching the five students that are up here today, and so for each of them, we have a certificate, and a sash. 
And we would like to present first to Brent. And do a bow. I do hugs with everybody. You are welcome. Here is your certificate and sash. And then if you would, down here, pass through to each, and then take a stand next to Cedar Marie. <laughs> and the next one, Kayleen. Kayleen, congratulations. And there we go, lady. Your certificate, your sash. This is the first time that we have had a group go through together. Typically, people join individually. Maybe there's one or two other people. But we had actually about six or seven people that joined at the very same time and worked together through this whole level. And we still have one or two that are just coming up. Jeremy, for instance, had an injury, and he's going to be receiving his short. OK, Jewel, congratulations, lady. And here we go, your certificate in your sash. Instructors, if we could turn to face them, and if each of us then first we're going to do a formal bow to them. Congratulations, students, and if you could join us. <laughs> yes. to observe the students, to watch them very carefully and very closely. 
And it's not just to kind of observe their progress in the art, the physical art, because to us, the physical art, well, that's only a tool, an instrument that's used in the actual training. The training is to learn to live a longer, healthier, happy life, and that is very inclusive of things like character development. And after watching students for a long period of time, the Sifu has an opportunity to offer to students, generally those who've been around at least five, six years, if not 10 years or longer, what is known as a bi-si. And a bi-si is a very formal tea ceremony. It is a ceremony where those few students have an opportunity to share tea, and as the Sifu shares tea with them, it is recognizing them as not only a member of the school, but also as a member of the family. And so it is with great pride that these individuals, and one more who couldn't make it here today, Ricos, one more other than these are going to be offered an opportunity to buy seat later this year. It's going to be a very special ceremony. There is one other buy seat that I offered, and that was about eight years ago, and that was one student, the only student also that we promoted to being a Sifu in the 30-some years that we've been doing this now. And I think that was probably the first, maybe the only by -sea that's taken place in the state of Wisconsin. So this is going to, again, be a very auspicious ceremony that we will have later this year. And once again, guests and others will be invited. I Simo? just sent a picture to Rob, Jenny, Michelle, and Jason, and said, the group that had requested a by -sea with your dad, meet your new brothers and sisters. <laughs> <laughs> so if you would at this time, Paul, so I would like to just bow to them and say thank you for your years of service. Each of them, again, is a senior instructor as well in their respective disciplines. And if you could also assist in congratulating them. These are the individuals, by the way, that not only, for instance, Dustin coordinates the lion dancing, most of them are lion dance team, or other activities around the school. Again, their involvement moves much further than just coming in and doing their art or even teaching. They are integral parts of the function of the school itself. And as such, we are very proud of these individuals. So, pardon? Do you have firecrackers? So, <laughs> more information will be coming out soon, and we will be having this ceremony. Probably it'll be sometime this summer. So thank you all for being a part of this. I try getting along without the glasses. It just doesn't work anymore. It hardly works with the glasses. <laughs> All right, and with that, we are actually going to begin the next part of this piece, this ceremony today, and that is the demonstrations. And a number of our instructors, most of them, will be performing today. We're going to start with an iron palm break. So, yes, very good. Michael, Dustin, if you could help, we'll put this out to the center. Iron palm, very specific training. There is what we call our traditional training. Most realize that that's a sort of, in the Kung Fu schools, that's a very external, it's kind of kicking, jumping, punching, you're familiar with it, the animals and so forth. A lot of movies and things today demonstrate that uh, quite effectively. But there are other parts of training within a school. One of them is iron body training. And one can train any number of the parts of their body to be able to both receive and deliver energy, more energy in their strikes, for instance, than they would just with the physical development of muscle, bone, tendon, and ligament. It is a development of what we call an internal life force, an electrical energy, actually, that flows through the body that we refer to as chi. Yeah. And Marisa is one of the few students, we have a handful here at the school that work with that iron palm or other iron body trainings. Marisa has been working on the iron palm. 
This is still her first year, and so the training usually runs from about three to 10 years, and it's every day. Every day she has to engage in the practice of striking her hands against mung beans for the medicinal value, as that mixes with the herbs she uses to keep her hands healthy and to not damage herself. Then she has to also strike gravel, and then she also has to be striking steel. If done properly, as one can see, uh, Marisa's hands look no different than any of yours. There are no scars, calluses, bruises, bumps, and so forth. If done properly, it is truly a conditioning that allows her to focus her energy through her body and out of her body. And for this demo, she is going to use her energy to slap a brick. Okay, this is the first time she has done this publicly as such, and there's a little bit of nervousness involved. And as such also, the mind has to be very calm in order to do this. There we go. As you can see also, she didn't pound through this, she didn't punch through it. With her hand, she just drops it onto that concrete block and it breaks. That is an example of internal energy development. Thank you, Lisa. Now, we are going to begin with the other demonstrations. And the first one that we're actually going to have demonstrated is a group of our youngest students from our Dragon and Tigers. And we have a number of Dragon and Tigers who would, uh, we would like to ask to come up now. These are generally students from about five to seven years of age. And the two instructors who have been working with them, <coughs> this is Joe Gao Katie and Joe Gao Eric. And these four students today are going to be demonstrating some of that which they have been working on in the school for the last 10 weeks or so. Now, what you probably can't tell from looking at that string with the, the balls uh, like attached to it is that this is to emulate what is known as a whip chain. A whip chain is a relatively advanced weapon, actually. It is several links of chain and then there is a dagger on the end of it. And we are going to, there. So if you could maybe just open that up and show, this is a whip chain. It is one of the traditional weapons of ancient China. This with the dagger on the end is a very unique weapon. Typically they have a little steel dart. The dagger on the end is unique to the Hase Fu system of Dong Fu. But they have been working without chains and learning to use the flexibility with this rope and then this weight on the end to demonstrate and begin to appreciate how to move with a flexible weapon. So however you would like to uh, orchestrate. Jing Lai. demonstrate some stances first. So, two tigers to the side. Dragon tiger show. Thank you. 
we're going to show you what that actually means and plays into. Katie, their, one of their instructors, has been training, as I said, with this very unique weapon. That system, the Hase Fu, is the only system that has a weapon such as this. And this is called the Dragon Head Five Sectional Steel Whip from the Hase Fu Hunga system. Katie? And to the audience, please. Yeah. It's just yes. <laughs> Another week or so. <laughs> They've got to work with it a little bit. I might add that the sets we're seeing today, for the most part, are very special as well. We have curriculum pieces within our school, obviously, that from the home system in particular, and the northern Shaolin system, and our Taiji. But also, part of my goal, my personal passion, if you will, over the last 30, 40 years has been to travel as much as I could to different places around the world, predominantly mainland China, to try to find much rarer sets, much rarer pieces, systems that really have not had much of an opportunity to be shown, systems which often is, is not, unfortunately, sometimes pass into obscurity, and some of those pieces are never preserved. And so what I have done is I have tried to collect from these different masters some very unique pieces symbolic of their system. And in this last year, as well as doing curriculum, it's only been in this last year, by the way, that's very good, Katie, for less than a year of training with that weapon. I have tried to take each of the instructors and share with them one of these sets so that each one will have a specialty piece. And in essence, they then are going to be responsible for seeing that that set is also perpetuated uh, throughout the future as well. So let's start. We have first the Dragons Elite and the tight uh, we did the Dragons, uh, we have the Parent and Youth Group. So if we could have the next group up. This is the group that follows the last. It's a unique group. We have some of those players here today. Some of the uh, Parent and Youth Generally, this is eight years to about 14 years of age, and it is a group where we offer the opportunity for a parent to join in. Uh, sometimes the students will have a parent uh, join in, other times they don't. It's not necessary, but it's kind of a nice opportunity for a lot of parents and children to, again, kind of bond a little bit more. So they have been working on and just completed a double dagger set from the Hungar system. So, at this time, if you would bow here, 
and turn and bow to the audience. And attention. Single tiger hides at the side. Dragon and tiger show. Ride the tiger. Retreating dragon. White horse lifts its front leg. Black tiger steals the heart. White crane blocks with its wing. Tiger forearm block. Grab the daggers, step, and open. Unwind, hook chop. Hook chop, hook chop, hook chop. Sweep, sweep, and sweep. Jump kick. High right hook, low left hook. Hook and stab, hook and stab, hook and stab. High X block, retreating drag and open. High X block, open kick, and double strike down. Receding, and offering. Turn high right hook, low left hook, hook and stab, hook and stab. Hook and stab. High X block. Retreating dragon. Open. High X block. Open. Kick and downward strike. Receding. And offering. Circle to the left hip. Roll uppercut. Rise up horse. Strike to the sides. Press down right. Left. Right. Left. And turn and hook and chop. To the rear. Dragon. Unwind, hook and chop. Switch hands on the dagger. Backing up, left high, right high, left high, right high, left high. And moving forward, right thrust, left thrust, right thrust, left thrust, right thrust. And switch hands. Stepping back, press low, press low left, right, and left. Sweep, sweep. Sweep, jump kick, and stab. Turn, right hook high, left low. Hook and chop. To the rear, drag it and open. To the front, hook and chop. To the rear, hook and chop. To the front, hook and chop. To the rear, double downward strike. Place in the left hand, turn, left cap, dragon tiger show. Single back fist, stepping back, tiger hides in the side. Very, very good. Very good. Yeah. 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 Is a, a, a Joe Gal here at our school. He has been working with me with this group, this parent youth group, for many years. As a matter of fact, his son, son started in the parent youth group, oh, I don't know, many, many years ago, 15 years or so, I, I don't know exactly. And Eric joined as well. And then his son uh, got a little bit older, went on to college, and we just couldn't get, I mean, we'd allowed Eric, I mean, we asked Eric to stay with the group and to help teach as well. So Eric, if you would please come up. And Eric has been working on a weapon, bow here please, and to the audience. These are double axes from Northern Shaolin.
you, Eric. another one of the instructors with the uh, Tigers and Dragons. Now, Eric has agreed to be here today. Um, Eric is still a little bit weak, I'm going to say. He was sick for a while here now. These are typically steel shields. Each one weighs, it's not unusual, 20 to 25 pounds. But again, a lot of times in training, we use lighter weapons. And so since the strength is definitely not up there today, he is going to be demonstrating with these two particular shields. Next time we'll have them with, yes. with the steel shield. Yes. And this is also from the Hasefu system, double tiger head shield. Most people think of a shield as being a defensive weapon usually used in conjunction with some other weapon in the other hand that is going to be the actual weapon of attack or offense. But the shields themselves can be either offense or defense or even both at the same time. Again, remember the weight of these and those edges are all sharp and consequently they can cut and slice not unlike a large heavier sword and they can also be used to block and let each block, as a matter of fact, if you're hit with it, be a strike in and of itself. And you can imagine if those are 20 pound weights at the end of each arm, how that can get pretty heavy. Thank you, sir. a tiger tail hungar broadsword set. A dango, a single sword or a large knife. gentlemen, if you've been watching a couple of our demos for the last year or two, you probably had a chance to see these guys. They have been working on a, again, very unique piece as well. This is from Canton, Hungar. This is a double broadsword and spear. And gentlemen, and to the audience, and don't break the spear. Yes. That's not nice.
see within this set, the last several times they've done it, as you can see, he disarms the broadsword. However, before he's done so, each time the broadswords have broke his spear with the energy that they exude in that set. Uh, today, I guess the broadsword showed not to break the spear, just to take his shoes off. <laughs> Always fun to watch this way. Uh, all right. Next up, we have Roger. And Roger is a senior student of mine. He's probably been with me longer than any of the students that are here in the studio today. Roger started oh, probably back in the early 80s or something like that, a back of ways. And Roger right now is teaching himself in the Manitowoc area. And he comes down to join us for these celebrations and today has uh, joined us to demonstrate a guando set. See it. And then if you would bow to the audience, please. And when you are ready. on the long guando is a puda. It's a little bit longer blade at times, but it's a uh, longer shaft as well. And it's a little bit lighter. The whole weapon is just a little bit shorter than the guando. This is a puda. And at this time, see Hig Mike will demonstrate the puda set. This is from the northern Shandong praying mantis style.
pace here. One of the styles that we do teach is the Tai Chi, and most people think of Tai Chi as kind of a moving meditation, and that's kind of the prevailing perception of Tai Chi these days. As of the Yang family, Yang Chen Fu, in the beginning of the 20th century, for the most part modifying a relatively martial system, an internal system, <coughs> into a system that would be used predominantly as an exercise. It is perhaps the most practiced exercise in the world today, but it is also originally Tai Chi Chuan. It is originally a martial art. And though practiced slow and in meditation and with focus on breathing, and internal movement of energy. It is a martial art. And so we have two uh, students here today, Cedra Marie and Rose, and they have been working on in this last year a two-person, long form, Yam style, Tai Chi piece. So you will see the same kinds of movements that you would probably see in a pretty advanced combat set, but it is done in a little bit slower and a little bit more meditative fashion. Don't underestimate how fast someone can move when they need to, if you practice slowly and meditatively, mindfully. Yang style, Tai Chi. Bow here, and to the audience. very close in system. There are mid-range, long-range, and then there are close systems. This is a very close system. Maintaining contact with the opponent, with your partner, is essential to actually listen to or hear their intent of their techniques even before they may be able to execute it. By staying in contact, you can tell if they are looking to move forward, left, right, arm, leg. A sensitivity again is developed. Many different techniques here from this Yang style system, again, performed relatively slowly. Relatively. Relatively. <laughs> just loaded with compound circular movements so as not to engage any of the incoming energy with brute, brute force itself. This is the idea of yin and yang, an aggressive yang technique. Thank you. You hit it, Rose. I know she was so worried about that. Great job, ladies. Great job. Great job. Another Tai Chi piece. Tai Chi, again, also has weapons. This is from Wudan Temple. We traveled to Wudan Temple several times, and one of the pieces that we brought back from Wudan Temple was this Wudan Tai Yi Tai Chi straight sword, or chant. And Cedar Pam is going to demonstrate the Tai Chi Tai Yi sword. Thank you. So again, this is a set that's done a little bit more slowly. The straight sword also. This is considered a sword because it's sharp on both ends, both sides. But this sword also is a yin weapon. <clears throat> because of the size of the weapon, and because there really is no mass to it at all, it can't be used to engage against a heavier or a hard weapon force on force. Therefore, the execution of a weapon like this has to be finesse. It has to be where one works with the energy, parrying, redirecting, and then from there, countering the opponent's attack. 
The way we sometimes describe that is like a matador in the arena. If a matador is in the arena and you release the bull, it is bad technique to charge the bull. You're going to be losing almost every single time. It's also bad technique to run from the bull. You're still going to be losing almost every single time. Rather, the matador is successful because the matador learns to become one with the energy of the bull. Parrying, redirecting, guiding, gliding, moving around in ways that do not necessitate taking head on that strength. Yet in life, for most of us, we go through life either charging right into stress or hiding from it. Why don't we tell somebody what we really think? Why do we feel like a victim? And a lot of times it's kind of flip-flop. The healthy way, because we can't reduce the amount of stress you experience in life, is simply learning to become more one with stress. And that's part of the training as well. To teach us how to become more at one with the energies and the stresses around us instead of taking them head on. The straight sword is an example of a weapon where you have to do that. There's no other way that weapon could be successfully used. southern dog food. And yeah, he's got to make sure he has a little room swinging that one. Oh, should we turn the fan on for you?
shorter staffs are very common in the traditional martial schools. As a matter of fact, staff is one of the first weapons, if not the first weapon taught. But the long pole, very much more seldom seen piece. And now, Matt. Matt is performing another seldom seen weapon. It is a sword again, but this is an extremely heavy sword. This is a nine ring executioner's blade. As such, unlike a lot of other swords, it isn't wielded around as much. There isn't as much movement on his part, running, jumping around. He stays within a much smaller, relatively smaller area, and it combines the finesse of that straight sword like C. Japan used. Because of the mass, it still has that external ability, however, to chop, block, and cut. Again, very heavy weapon. <laughs> Where's that opponent, man? He disappeared. <laughs> swords versus spear from Hungar. He is going to now demonstrate a solo double broadsword set. This is called the double twin dragon. <laughs> I don't think she's one of the opponents, but well, maybe we should grab her. There you go. <laughs> traditional ones, but uh, as you can see, this weapon means a lot to her. And so, Kai Yi, Kai Ji, Full Chen, or the Whisk. And, about here, about to the audience. And, Whisk set. Kai Ji Chuan.
back to the audience, please. Zach is doing a weapon uh, from the Baji system, but uh, picked up from a very small village, about a three hour train ride from Tianjin in China. And it's a specialty weapon from this particular Baji family. This is called <laughs> a flaming star or meteor hammer. It is about a 12 foot rope with a steel ball on the end of it. yours. And to have to say to Matt, well, you've had nine days uh, <laughs> instead of a thousand. So Let's see what you can do with it. <laughs> so as, as difficult as it is for him, perhaps, to be up here in front of everyone doing this, I told him I would personally very much appreciate it if you just give it a shot. These are the deer horn Bagua knives. Bagua is another one of the internal systems, the mindfulness internal system, Bagua, Shingi, Taiji, and in particular, this is a unique weapon to the uh, Bagua system. It's called the deer horn knives. And there are actually, well, there's actually one place that you can hold it. All the other edges, points, and so forth are extremely sharp. So it's a very, very difficult weapon to work with. And it's an enclosed weapon. Matt, bow here, please. And bow to the audience. And Bagua Deer Horn.
next. This is a piece that uh, I picked up in uh, what's called Small Goose Pagoda in Xi'an, China, which is one of the first capitals of China. And uh, this is a monk's spade set. It is a very long, very complex spade set. Again, another one that Dustin has just finished, in essence, working with. <coughs> that we do for internal energy development. Within the internal systems, we usually refer to that as qigong, or energy exercise. And they can be anything from seated, to standing, to moving. And again, like the Tai Chi's, they are meditative, and they are mindfully focusing on your breath, and the movement of this energy through all the different organ systems within the body. Within the systems also, in a number of the external systems, there are often qigongs as well. And we sometimes refer to those as external qigongs. They are dependent not only upon the breathing, they are dependent not only upon the mindfulness, and at times sounds 
within your movement to stimulate certain systems within the body, but they are also dependent on the external strength as well. So I'm going to demonstrate a part of the set. This is called Titsin, or Iron Wire Set. It is the internal advanced dragon set from the Hungar system. And I'm going to demonstrate a part of it. It takes anywhere from about 15 minutes to a half hour at times to complete, depending on the time that you have available for and with it. That's beginning to. Thank you. All right. We are ready for some light dance closure. So, we're going to give our team a chance to get back in the Lions. a chance to get back up here. And this is going to be a little bit more of a traditional dance.
many of the different sounds are used to stimulate different organ systems within the body. So again, the mind is conscious also as you breathe, breathing down to the spleen, breathing down to the liver, breathing to the kidneys and so forth, and each sound then can stimulate that organ system as well. So it's definitely an internal energy development set. And well, we're waiting for what? And why did you use the rings? The rings, again, add in two cases, in two situations, uh, one to the strength at the end. If you hold anything out there in your hand for any period of time, much less 10 or more pounds on each arm, the physical strength is also developed. But another one of the characteristics, by their constantly moving up and down on the forearms, you also condition the arms, where there are usually all kinds of nerves and sensitive places to the strikes so that blocking and striking does not damage your system, ideally your opponents. So if they hit you and your block hurts, your strikes are probably going to be pretty good too. What do we say in Don't block, we strike. <laughs> Yes. He's the oh, he's running through the dance with them. He is, and then he would like to come and just tell you all one change. So. Okay, he's going to step up. Dustin is the one that coordinates our lion dance team. As uh, as I continue to get younger, I have <laughs> stepped back more and more each year from the actual uh, instruction of all students that are here. One time, I worked with every student that came through. Now I work with the senior instructors and the assistant instructors for the most part. And then they work with newer students, beginning students in the first few levels of their training. Then I also have done the same with the lion dancing. At one point, I taught all of the lion dancing. And now, in the last couple of years, I have turned that over to Dustin. And so Dustin is the head lion dance teacher or instructor in the school. He still lets me drum a little bit, so <laughs> I can still keep my hands in the game. But he teaches the drumming as well to any number of different students. As a matter of fact, all the lion dance performers, whether they are on instruments, whether they are in a tail, whether they play a Buddha or the head of a, a lion, they all have to learn all parts of these shows, of these pieces. Another interesting piece, perhaps, that is seldom understood about lion dancing is that the lions really have a difficult time at times seeing what's going on. The lions, again, are in this big head. It's kind of like animating a puppet from the inside with your whole body. And so they are dependent upon the music. The drum beats tell the lions what to do. The drum beats tell the lion to go up, to go down, to slow down, to do this kind of dance, to do this trick, to check that out, to move forward, to change. And so they have to be listening to the beats of the drum and the accompanying gong and cymbal in order to know how to perform, what to perform. So there are today differences in the way that the more modern lion dancing is done. Lion dancing today has become a little bit more of a performance art. It is a dance today in which all the steps, everything is choreographed. So every team would do the same moves, the same way, everything identical. The traditional, if you will, the older way, is where the lions have to respond to the situation around them. And so we have to be able to adjust to that situation. We have to be able to take them, for instance, if they are outside from one building to another, to enter the building, to not enter the building, to go up steps, to bow at this area or that area, to back up, to go forward. And again, they can't, for the most part, even see what that amounts to. So the instrumentation becomes extremely important to them. So maybe that's why he only lets me drum a little bit, because I go off on these tangents sometimes. <laughs> Lions are like, what are we doing? He's like, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was that 60s Inagata De Vida. I just started sometimes getting into my own play here, and the lions are, okay, just keep dancing. Just keep dancing. All right.
change things up on you a little bit, did I? Yeah. <laughs> and they're putting pants on, so. That's always a good thing. Oh, we're not doing was plan B. <laughs> we did plan B. Uh, There are several tricks that are performed by the lions. The first piece that we do when we bring them out, they are going to find a place where they can, in essence, lay down. And the first thing we do for the new year is to awaken the lions. So, Michael, what does it look like back there? Seconds. <laughs> Yes, we did. <laughs> and you're on. Right. <laughs> yes, I did. Be careful. <laughs> you're bringing refreshments. Oh, for the lions. Yeah, they do like refreshments, don't they? <laughs> Don't watch that yet, it's not part of it.
get up, I think they're awake. One of the first things they like when they first get up is a drink. And the bench symbolizes the log at the side of the river where they're going to come to drink. First they need to kind of check it out, especially with that questionable character there near it. Let's check it out and see if we can get a drink.
favorite food is the chat. The eating of the greens. And I think we have a lion that's found some chat up on the top of the pole. Let's see how that goes. Just the lettuce. Just the lettuce. Oh, 
incredibly Come, 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 come. Calm down, calm down, calm down. Listen, listen. Yes. Do you want to see him? No meat. Matt, go up. No meat. Just one. Who is that, Avi? All right. Is that your daddy? This will be good. This will be good. Do you want to hold on to the Are we ready?
of you know a good number of our dancers. Um, the dancing is also, as you can tell, an extremely difficult and strength requiring, technique requiring activity. So we are very, very proud of all the dancers here at the school. And uh, okay, Dustin. we have everybody. Dustin. Dustin's arranging something for Dustin's you. Dustin's mm -hmm. arranging. <coughs> Dustin's doing a lot of arranging today. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, delegated to Zach. Okay. Oh, you delegated. Delegation, let's go. Ooh, you are on your way. <laughs> you trained me well. Yeah. I'm supposed to just stand here? Well, I don't know. Somebody said my name. I thought I was summoning. Okay. Uh, Joe. Uh, Joe. Just look at me. <laughs> and I'm done. Zach is getting a uh, surprise that one of our students wanted to uh, give to the school. Oh, wow. Um, so. Zach is digging this up? I picked the wrong seeing. <laughs> <laughs> but I saw, I saw, I saw seeing Marin's going back, so I think we're covered. Give him a minute. He's seeing what's back there. Uh, <laughs> get out. Put the head back up. <laughs> So you sent Mike to find Mike, Zach. Go hit him. Who's? <laughs> oh, you're collecting that lettuce, aren't you? <laughs> you want some serious Let me guess. Talk. Did Mom or Dad send you out here? <laughs> yes, Kyle. Oh, unless he gets a whole head full, he's not coming home, is he? Nope. <laughs> yeah. he got nowhere to sleep. <laughs> what is going on? I do not know. Do not know what is coming on, going on, coming yeah, off. What is this? Yeah. Wow. Or Celine said Yes, yes, yes. Wow. This is a, a beautiful gift from one of my students. He, he knew that uh, is my passion, ambition to share the heritage. But he's very lonesome at my house. Oh. <laughs> so whenever I see our Sauling brothers and sisters dance or line dance, I get deeply touched. Your joy, your passion, your dedication re really touches my heart. And uh, so I'm going to present the lion to Sifu and all of you. Wow. So wow. please bring my lion alive and vibrant. Wow. Thank you. Wow. We will do so. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I don't know how polite you is, but I will give you a hug. <laughs> thank you. Celine is actually a student here as well, but just had some pretty rough knee surgery that's been kept her out of training for a while. But her family, her grandkids are in here studying, and there, as a matter of fact, right up here now. You gonna got a picture of them, Celine? Yeah, just one. Okay. Smart. Oh, look at that. Yes. At that age, they still love each other. All right, <laughs> that's not. Did I say that out loud? <laughs> did I say that out loud? <laughs> did you Did you mention that Casey's actually on the team? Okay. Yeah, and Casey. Also, who is sitting down here with the lion, Casey's also on the lion dance team. So not only is he a, a student in the program, and you probably saw him outside of a lion doing those double daggers before as well, but he's a member of the team. So uh, on behalf so of all of us, thank you for allowing us to see a lion dance this year, to bring in the new year, and this is going to be a great year, year of the Earth Dog. Gong Hai Fa Choi.
Happy New Year to each of you. Thank you very, very much. And I think that's it. Thank you for joining us for celebrating the New Year. <coughs> wow. Lights off, guys. I need to see this. <laughs>